<laughs> so when when we're talking canning for you, is that, I mean, maybe if, if someone doesn't know the basics, mm-hmm. are we talking, you know, classic canning, like a water bath canning sort of method, and then you're putting those up for the winter basically, right? Yeah. So um, I started out when I started canning was water bath canning and it was tomatoes and applesauce. Those were like the two things and then jam. And then it's kind of evolved from there to now where I try to have a couple convenient type things on the pantry shelf too. So things like pizza sauce and ketchup and condiments, I guess. So just trying to replace what I would buy at the grocery store with my homemade or locally sourced if possible. And then last year I did start pressure canning too, which is where you can can low low acidic foods like Mm. broth and beans and things like that. So that's been kind of cool being able to have my own homemade chicken broth on the pantry shelf. And then also I was able to grow a year's worth of black beans. And so instead of just keeping them dry, which I don't tend to, you know, cook with as often because they are a little bit more prep work and you kind of have to think advance um, because I've learned to pressure can them. I can put them in a jar and they're just like if I was to go to the store and buy a can of black beans. Oh, nice. Yeah. You know, that's to me definitely a more elite level of canning. How how many years have you been actively canning? I have been canning for seven years. So I started canning back when my husband and I first got married when we lived in our suburban lot. And it took me six years before I delved into the world of pressure canning. And mm-hmm. when it comes down to it, pressure canning sounds super intimidating because you have to follow the rules exactly. I mean, yeah. canning in general, you need to follow the rules exactly. It's not something you want to mess around with the science of it because, you know, there's tried and true ways and it's very safe as long as you fi- follow the rules. And when it comes down to pressure canning versus water bath canning, pressure canning is actually a lot easier to do. Mm-hmm. It's just getting over that intimidation factor, I guess. It took me a long time before I got over it. But once I did, I'm like, oh, this is actually a lot easier than... Yeah. And it's mostly because the prep work of when you're pressure canning beans, there's a lot less work that goes into that versus all the tomatoes. I've got to peel them and sauce them and cook them down and jams. You've got to cook them down and there's just a lot more that goes into the actual making of the product before sure. you put it into the jar. Yeah, it's like cooking a whole recipe and then going exactly. through the canning process. I would say to me- That's exactly right. What what you mentioned is, is I believe, the the intimidation factor. It's You hear these stories about canning gone wrong, and then you hear water bath, you hear pressure, and you're like, I don't even know what those mean, yeah. let alone the science of canning. Because it is, it is a true science, right? You mentioned- yeah low acidity foods. And if someone doesn't understand what you might mean by that, I mean, you, you're putting cooked or uncooked food in a jar and leaving it at room temperature. There's obviously some serious considerations when you do something like that. With no oxygen. And that's where it, you can, exactly. So you need to know the science behind it. Yeah. Where did you go for early learnings in that? I, I still find it so interesting that before you were gardening, you were canning, which I think most people would do the reverse, I would imagine. But maybe it just stems from your love of cooking. I think, it, yeah, it stemmed from my love of cooking. And I was going down, you know, like a health rabbit hole and, you know, buying tomato sauce in a tin can. And if you jar it, then it's in a glass jar. And I couldn't afford to go buy Mm. tomatoes in a glass jar because they're three times the price, you know, at the grocery store. And that's kind of to where it came from. And I had the passion to want to grow stuff, but I didn't have the space or the ability to do that. And so I'm kind of glad that I did it in that order because when you're growing a ton of stuff and if I didn't know how to can and I had 150 pounds of tomatoes on my counter, that would be very stressful. And so it kind of worked out that it happened in this order that it was learning to cook and then preserve food and then grow it because they're all totally different skill sets. And to try to learn them all at one time would be extremely overwhelming. And so that's just the natural progression at work in my life. Watch the full episode right here and subscribe for more new episodes every single week.